I don't believe that we should ever have a good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of government. Welcome everyone, we're Simply Bitcoin, it's the weekend recap. We cover the news, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, hardware releases, and the websites by plebs. We're diving into the numbers, let's do it. Number time! Brought to you by Bitcoin 2022. It's coming up April 6th to the 9th, less than a month. It's going to be the largest Bitcoin celebration conference ever in the history of mankind. It's going to be hosted in sunny, sunny Miami Beach, Florida. The speaker list is crazy. President Naim Bukele, Michael Saylor, Saifedean, Jack Maulers, Adam Back, Senator Lummis, Dr. Jordan Peterson. And you can take advantage of the link down below for 10% off your tickets to Bitcoin 2022. At the time of this recording, the block height is 728,265. The Bitcoin price, 41,000. 205 chain rewrite days 741 total public lightning capacity nico ever climbing 3537.63 moscow time 2427 blocks to the happening 111,735 and the samurai whirlpool unspent capacity samurai whirlpool is a collaborative spend or coin join service and is not a mixer Anyways, there's 4,466.9 BTC. I, I don't think they see a difference. I don't think Elizabeth Warren I don't cares. Care. I'm keep saying it. Coin join mixer. It's the same. It's the same thing. Um, it doesn't matter. They're evading. Uh, they're, they're evading authorities. Uh, money laundering. Uh, <laughs> terrorism. Terrorism. Uh, <laughs> you know. You know. It's funny you say that because when you said Moscow time. Jack Dorsey, block clock in the back, blue check mark, picks it up and says, oh, this is the Moscow time. The reason I'm bringing that up, Phil, is because that was before Russia invaded Ukraine. <laughs> now it's like, it's like, Moscow, it's like, what are those, what are those Bitcoiners doing? <laughs> They, so definitely, definitely, this is going to get misconstrued. Definitely, we're we're somehow going to be we're we're somehow going to be ostracized for this. Right? It's like they talk about the time in Russia every day. They were part they're, of this all along. The they're Russian campaign. Oh man! The okay, pointers are part of the Russian disinformation misinformation Dude, campaign. I, I'm already hearing that. To be honest we with you, first, we we, we, we did say it. For, we saw we said it a week before Elizabeth Warren tried and failed miserably uh, yes. to try to use the crisis in Ukraine to go after Bitcoin. But anyways, Phil, check this out. I thought this was really interesting. Um, where, the, where the world regulates cryptocurrency, again, before I'm going to put a giant asterisk, you could regulate the on and off, the on and off ramps. If you're buying Bitcoin through fiat, right? Phil seems confused. Phil, what's going on? Yeah, what, what's up with the gray zones? Oh, I don't. I think that they just—they're like, oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's all I'm confused by. The rest of it, I understand. <laughs> yeah, like, like I don't know. Uh, ones, I'm like, wait, what are those? Are those uh, the places we go to live? Yeah, <laughs> it looks. It looks like it. it looks like it. Um, sorry, continue. But no, that's a really good point, right? Because there's someone in the comments like, what is the gray? Um, okay, so I completely forgot what I was saying. So I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, okay. You can't sorry. ban. You can't ban Bitcoin. Right. You can't regulate Bitcoin once it's in Bitcoin. Right. It would defeat the purpose of Bitcoin. But what you can regulate, right, this is what governments would like you to believe is you could regulate the on and off ramps. And by being able to regulate the on and off ramps, think about it. Most people still operate in fiat. Right. Uh, people don't understand the true power that they have uh, when it comes to Bitcoin. Anyways, so check this out. Uh, we're going to go through some countries. So this is um, Australia, New Zealand. Right. You know. Hong Kong? Is that Hong Kong? Yeah, that is Hong Kong. So I guess Hong Kong and China or Macau. So Macau, there's a ban. So Hong Kong is the green. That's weird because Hong Kong is now part of main. I don't know. Anyways, so obviously China's illegal. Um, Japan, legal South Korea, Russia, uh, Turkey. Interesting, right? Y you'll start to pick up a pattern here, guys. In the countries that need Bitcoin the most, <laughs> it happens to be regulated the most. I don't think that's a coincidence, right? You have uh, South America. They, I guess there's not really a lot. Argentina, it's regulated, I guess, legal. Bolivia, um, not so, you know, implicit ban. We have Ecuador, also banned. We have, Fre is that French Guayana? No, uh, I don't know. Guayana, I think that's right next to Venezuela. Anyways, and then this tiny little speck is El Salvador and then, you know, the United States Green. But I think that this also has a disservice because it doesn't, 
you know, it's just bunching up regulation all in one, right? Like, what levels of regulation? What's going on? Anyways, I thought it was a really interesting graph. Does it matter if you're in Bitcoin? No. Um, does it matter if you're in those countries and you're trying to live off Bitcoin? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, for, hopefully the Middle East, you know, starts to open up to it more. I think China's a lost case because they're doubling down on their central bank digital currency and Bitcoin is just better. So they don't want any competition. Um, and then, you know, we had the positive news from Europe that they're not going to ban proof of work. But that was literally because people made a ruckus on Twitter and found out that's what they were trying to do. Like sneaky AF. What what is is this democracy? Is this the representative democracy that they talk so much about? This is some BS, bro. And you know what's what's crazy, Phil? Before I shut up, is that they did the same thing in the U.S. with the infrastructure bill, bro. Now they burnt their finger. Now they know that these crazy Bitcoiners are gonna make a ruckus. But like, bro, they're just trying to sneak shit in. What is that? That's crazy. That's like a dictatorship, Phil. Clown world democracy. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, okay. So up. look, the on that chart that you showed, which is super interesting, there was asterisks next to the um, the regulated countries, and it indicated that those were the countries that the regulations were having to do with anti money laundering. Yeah, exactly. See, look, tax money laundering and anti terrorism financing laws apply. So ironic, so ironic, because we've shown time and time again how their rails are the best, best rails to facilitate the money laundering. Yep. So, yep. And, and, and the criminal activity. So it's just, I, I just, you know what, look, it's interesting, right, that we see this regulation. I, I wonder, I wonder if some of those countries where we see an outright ban, I wonder if that might change. I'm not talking about China, right? Like, I mean, I have zero hope for China ever deciding to undo that ban uh, at this point. I think that this was the the final ban that they had. I don't know how much more they can really do because at this point... 10 I think years in are, prison. 10, 10 years, years in, in prison. prison. <laughs> I mean, like, look... Like, like, I mean, like, that's it, right? But some of these other countries, uh, you know, some of these other countries where they have outright bans, maybe they'll reverse it. And the ones with implicit bans, that to me sounds like they're middle of the fence. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. I agree. Anyways, look, it's an ever-changing landscape. As we've said time and time again, this is a brand new asset. Nobody fully understands. It's emerging. And we are always trying to retrofit these antiquated laws on top of this brand new asset that nobody understands and it doesn't fit properly right and we can see it doesn't fit properly because it doesn't work all the time and it doesn't work correctly so anyways good times phil is bringing in the fire uh i don't want to spoil that but yeah i completely agree dude i think the, their their panties are in a bunch they don't know what to do they're like, they're like will this thing go away it won't go away and then now they're kind of kind of get stuck in this point where it's like they want people to use their currency but their currency isn't better. So they have to rely potentially on coercion through regulation, right? So it's it's such an interesting scenario. But we'll be here to cover it on Simply Bitcoin. But anyways, Phil, it's time for... The Daily Fail. Brought to you by Amber App. Check them out. Amber.app. Low fees, fair spreads, smart automation, a Bitcoin stacking app by actual Bitcoiners. The link is down below. Amber. The smart way to stack sets. Now look, you may get upset with us for not choosing the fails that you may have chosen, but we got tagged in so many fails this weekend. I don't know what happened. It's like Twitter had a complete meltdown and we all just like dropped like 40 IQ points. I, I just don't know what happened. Anyways, it was insane. Uh, so here we go. Tom Brady. Tom Brady just like, you know, like I tweeted, disappears into his own ass. Let's check this out. <laughs> Here we go. What's up, Vitalik? You may not know me, but just wanted to say, I'm sure he has no idea who Tom Brady is. For, for real, though. For real. I, I don't like Vitalik. Definitely not that paying attention to sports means anything. But if there's one bet I can make, it's that he doesn't pay attention to sports. Anyways, I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you for everything you've built in the world of shitcoins. Otherwise, at autograph wouldn't have been possible. Hope I get to meet you someday. You're the goat. No, no. Vitalik just created the biggest affinity scam with the 70% pre-mine that, as Nico always likes to point out, is centrally controlled um, with, what is it, over 70% of the nodes on Amazon Web Services. So no, he's definitely not the GOAT. Now, the person or people or whatever it is, the entity that is Satoshi Nakamoto, that is most likely the GOAT. Um, I'd say that that's the GOAT. But you see... 
they, you know, Tom can't really go and thank Satoshi. And if he does, you know, he's not going to get the giant circle jerk back. So, which who knows? I don't know if Vitalik actually did thank him back or anything like that. Um, but I do find this a total fail, Nico. Did- <laughs> Dude, I, I think you summarized it perfectly. By the way, we got corrected. Um, it was like on the comments. So apparently, so it is 70% of hosted servers for Ethereum. And it's oh. 40% of AWS. So for oh, of those 70% okay. of hosted servers that run Ethereum nodes, because they're so resource intensive, they run on, it doesn't, there's other server companies, right? It could be Google, right? For example. So of those 70, 40%, 40 are run on Amazon Web Services. Correct. Correct. And it was, okay. it was um, Hugo, by the way. So shout out to Hugo for, oh. for, for he's the one that actually pointed me in the right direction. Um, now to Tom Brady, um, another grifter, right? Taking advantage of a movement. The dude has laser eyes on Twitter. Like it, it doesn't surprise me. You see this so many times with the celebrity endorsements. They're there, and I heard this in Twitter Spaces today. They're they're really in their own bubbles, bro. Like, these people are so wealthy, so rich. They don't interact with the the peasants, right? So I think that he's just so you know, and then and then he sees like, oh, Time Magazine, Vitalik, like, oh wow, he's on my level, you know, like, I, of course it's speculation, but I mean, like, you know, it, it, these people completely just don't care what anyone else has to say, dude. Like they're completely encapsulated. Now the I feel like a lot of that was noise, but here's the signal, right? Unfortunately. What I what I see the dangers of of this type of situation is he has such a big platform, he has such a big influence, yes, right? That that's essentially external externally validating Ethereum, right? The Time Magazine, the Tom Brady approval, right? And people are buying that with the conception that it's equal to Bitcoin, right? And I think that I think that's going to play itself out eventually, but I think a lot of people are going to get caught up holding something that doesn't have absolute scarcity, doesn't have, um, you know, it's not censorship resistant the way that Bitcoin is, right? So yeah. that's, you know, that's a little concerning to me. But anyways, Phil, what is the next fail? That is, yeah, I agree. That is the fail. It's too bad. It's too bad. All right. Thank you for tagging us, Mr. Robots. Here we go. Let's see here. What is this fail? This is a retweet from Richard Dick Whitman. Love the account. Richard is definitely a toxic Bitcoiner. Love his takes. Let's dive into this video. Okay, but before we do, let's see what uh, what Richard had to say. If you drive an electric car, gas prices would not be affecting you, clearly. Ha ha ha. This person is the actual U.S. Energy Secretary, whose job it is to make sure the country is energy secure. All right, let's take a look at this video and see what she had to say. Obviously, we have the acute issues with the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack, but looking more holistically in a macro view, how does this speed up the efforts at DOE to move in more of a renewable direction since this is going to have an impact on people at the pump? Yeah, I mean, we obviously are all in on making sure that we meet the president's goals of getting to 100% clean electricity by 2035 and uh, net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And, um, you know, if you drive an electric car, this would not be affecting you, clearly. Uh Obviously, we have the acute... Yeah, before we move on to the next fail, I I just want to point out, right? Do Do you see what it's all about? It's all about meeting these arbitrary goals right that that feed their narrative so they meet these arbitrary goals and they and they don't give a shit about the everyday person they don't they don't care whether you're starving whether you can afford to drive to work whether you can and that that's your fucking problem okay that is your problem you deal with that you if you had an electric car you'd be okay that's insane I, I can't believe, like, I can't believe that these are the people, like, that says a lot about us for not giving a shit enough and having these people make choices for us. No more mean tweets. Remember, no more mean tweets. Right? This is true. Um, there are no mean tweets, Nico. No I, I more, do feel a lot better and less offended. If you ignore the inflation and the high gas prices, it's better because there's no more mean tweets, right? Um, no, but in all seriousness, okay, put the political stuff aside. Um, look, this is central planning. Okay, right and simple. Okay, this is literally the government trying to plan the way the economy goes by coercion. Okay, look, most people can't afford an electric car. Okay, 
So what they're trying to do is that they're trying to shove it down your throat regardless without any regard for economics, which is why the price of, ga the price of gas is where it's at, which is why inflation is where, where it's at. These are not these are not people that are governing. These are activists. That's what it is. You have to call it for what it is. And this is this has catastrophic consequences in Germany. The same people that were with the same rhetoric of the environment, of the environment, of the environment, put Germany, a country, now in a very vulnerable position with Russia, where they're forced to buy natural gas from Russia because they decided to shut down all the nuclear power plants because they didn't check off all the environmental lists. Dude, these are the same people, the same rhetoric, the same type of ideas. It's garbage central planning. That's what it is. This is not a free market. Let the free market decide whether they want an electric car or not. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that one day an electric car will be cheaper to make than a gas car. That's going to happen on its own without any type of government coercion in the process. So these arbitrary numbers are bullshit. And what do they do? They hurt the American people. And this isn't only happening in America. The same ideology, the same movement is also happening in Europe too. Listen, we, we care about the environment. G Bitcoin is green, much greener than other types of industries. So I'm not trying to bash on that. I think it's a noble cause. I think it's very important to take care of the planet. What I disagree with, and I know, Phil, you feel the same way, is giving bureaucrats the ability to get to dictate what you can use and what you cannot use. You don't get to eat steak. You only get to eat bugs and live in a pot. F you and your great reset, because this is all part of it. Anyways, those are my thoughts. I love it, man. I love it. I love the passion. You always bring the fire. All right, well, look. You know what? On the heels of what you're talking about with central planning... Right? Here's a little bit more not-so-free market information, right? IMF does not want to allow another country in Latin America to adopt Bitcoin. I know you are super shocked. So hold on a second here. Let me, uh... All right, here we go. The Global Financial Authority, the IMF, is trying to stop the adoption of Bitcoin and shitcoins in another Latin country, in another Latin American country. But the Argentines have not shut up. Legislators from Argentina's Chamber of Deputies approved last Friday... By 202 votes to 37, the project formulated jointly with the IMF to refinance the country's debt. The vote came after extensive discussion during the night as protesters threw stones and set fire in front of the Argentine Congress, recalling disastrous deals made earlier with the IMF, of course, because the IMF understands that nobody can pay back any of these fucking loans because none of this money is real. And they produce this debt out of thin air. Anyways, controversial Bitcoin and shitcoin clause in the newly approved agreement has Argentines speaking out in public about the implications this could have on Bitcoin and shitcoin adoption in the country. The debated statement included in the bill approving said debt refinancing states. Check this out. The national government for a better safeguard of financial stability will discourage the use of Bitcoin and shitcoins in the prevention of fraud and informality in the same way the digitization of payments will have official incentives and additional protection will be given to the financial consumer. Dude, it finished i'm i'm, I'm so yeah and here we go making it clear to the argentine government that the imf prefers cbdc's over open source protocol digital currencies that's right that's right they look at this point you remember before they were calling bitcoin private networks now they have no shame they're they're, they're done right they, they know they can't i mean they know they can't fool anyone anymore look we are going to offer better protection in our closed system you're still going to be a slave and we're still able to cut you off anytime you, we, we want. But you're going to be somehow better protected. I don't even know what that means. I don't think they know what that means. They're, dude, you're spot on. They just want power. Like it, you see it from Elizabeth Warren. You see it from, you know, the pompous attitude of Jerome Powell. You see it from the pompous, even more pompous attitude of Christine Lagarde in the European Central Bank. She's a convicted friend of them, by the way. I'm going to say that every time I mention her name um, because she's the one that's trying to convince you to use her stuff. Anyways, so look, clearly, and this is what I always say, right? They're, they're using coercion now, right? But coercion is no match for incentives. 
Yeah. So they could try and they could pay off the right people, the you know, in Argentina, the bureaucrats, to try to pass this on. But at the end of the day, if you're an Argentinian, you know what inflation is like. It's it's a it's a country plagued by inflation, a history of inflation. So regardless of what the guy in the suit on TV has to say, what you care about is being able to feed your family or not. And they might make it bumpy right now, right, to, you know, the fiat on and off ramps, which is what I mentioned earlier on the show. They might make that bumpy right now, but they're not going to be able to do that long term, especially when there's a better solution. Because the government is going to have to convince people before you didn't have an option. The government is going to have to convince people, incentivize people. This is why you should use my money. Right now, what they're re- what they're using is violence, coercion, and threats. They're not they're not saying this is a better money. They're using the vague terrorism money laundering. This, even though we know that the majority of money laundering and terrorism is financed by fiat, the financial system itself, not Bitcoin. So. Dude, it, it's just, this is how it's going to play out. I suspect it's going to happen in every fucking country, dude. It's just how it is, you know? But I'm most bullish on the countries that have the U.S. dollar as legal tender, and they don't print their own money, so therefore they don't get power from that, right? I'm bullish on those countries to adopt Bitcoin, right? Um, and El Salvador already did that. It's not a theory anymore. So anyways, Phil, it's time for... The Daily Meme Review. Brought to you by Citadel 21. It's the best Bitcoin cultural zine. It's stories, articles, comics by Toxic Savage Bitcoiners. This is volume 10. It just came out. There's different artwork every volume. There's scarce. There's only a thousand physical copies made per volume. So get your print of Citadel 21 today before they run out. The first meme is brought to us by Leota. Uh... <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm already picturing in my mind what the bottom image is going to be. Shitcoin expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Shitcoin reality. Dude, that that is a top-notch oh, meme. Leota. Wow, bro. Wow. Okay, moving on. Uh, by Ellers. Uh, the people who are $30 trillion in debt are giving you a credit. <laughs> Phil, you are bringing the fire memes today, bro. Awesome. I'm a sh- You see how the meme game has upgraded? That is because Phil has taken up the responsibility, and clearly he's a lot better at this than I am. All right, next one. Um, moving on by Hank Hogan. There's so much to learn. That's a deep one. I like it. It's yeah. like the comic, the old comic book print. Very cool. Right. Shout out, Honk. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so. I had to. Um, so, banana bread is violence. Uh <laughs> bread ma, these okay so a little bit of backstory phil and i have been clashing on this so we would love to get your guys's opinion so yes. this is jason lowey he's the guy that came with uh you know that the proof of work and bitcoin mining pr- uh replaces traditional kinetic warfare like you know aircraft carriers nukes and whatever and he went a little bit overboard we're gonna cover it but this is what this meme is making fun of um I, look, the way that I feel it, it, the way that I see it, right, is different than Phil. I'm like, bring him on the show so Phil could ask him the hard questions. Phil's like, nah. <laughs> so that's how we feel about it. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Anyways, I know the last one. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I'm sorry. This is awesome. Okay, three, two, one. Hold on. I have to enable the volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Dude, this is, have you watched it? No, I have not. Dude, okay. He, he's Yellow's a fucking genius. Yellow is a genius. Yellow is a fucking genius. Okay, anyway. By the way, this guy, Yellow, is the one who's in the Amber app. For anyone who doesn't know, that Muppet, this is him. Anyway, so check it out. Hey guys, uh, this is Jason Lowry, and I just wanted to say something to you guys uh, because everybody is like making fun of my thesis that Bitcoin uh, is violence, and I want to talk to you about. So, as I was saying, have you even guys seen, like, a, a miner, a cis miner? That thing is very heavy, and I don't know, like, what you call a weapon, but if you th- I throw that thing, <laughs> right? So, if I get, like, an assist miner, I, I enter a store, and I say, hands up, I'm gonna throw this assist in your head, <laughs> and, right? And I take money. Uh, by law, I use the weapon. <laughs> Checkmate. Look at this and look at this. They're the same thing. I'm from MIT. I'm in Space Force. I know things. Oh my so god. So stay in your lane and don't cancel, guys. It's too bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Man, okay. So, first of all, 
before Phil fucking nails us in the coffin, bro, I hope you still come on the show. Uh, <laughs> look, the way that I see it, I appreciate the work that you've put into Bitcoin, but apparently you went a little bit too far over the weekend. <laughs> Phil, what do you feel about this? Ah, oh, wow. <laughs> so this, it's definitely not a conventional meme review, right? And yes, we definitely clashed. Like, we went back and forth for like an hour, right? <laughs> so Nico does not agree with me. I, I personally... Uh, look, dude, listen. I, the, so, the so, that, hold on, so hold on. Don't burn so, bridges. Phil, Phil I, sets them on fire that blows so them up. So hold on a second. So hold on a second. I did not insult him, okay? I did not. I did not. All I did was disagree and explained that other people were voicing the, their opinion just like he was, Okay. I did make fun of his narrative, then. okay? I did make fun of his narrative, and then that's when I got blocked, okay? Um, but, and if you want, I can, I can share the tweet, Nico, so you can embarrass me further. But anyways, the, the point is, is that I don't believe that I want to give space to that narrative on the show. That, that's my, but to your point, right, I do see your angle of, well, hey, you know, like, if he would join us on the show, then we could have a proper discussion about it, and, you know, people could make up their own minds. This is you, true. You could ask him difficult questions on the show, you know, but... This is it, true. Hey, dude, listen. Maybe he'll join us in a few months, but I, I pretty much burnt that bridge for now. Like, maybe maybe it's not burnt. Maybe maybe it's just there's, like, a, a, a gate. <laughs> dude, you know, it, we went from Phil insulting people to Phil... <laughs> Indirectly insulting. So we're making progress is what I'm trying to say. We are getting better. We are getting better. People we were. Yes. But it's, it's cool. It's cool because Phil stays based. Right. And we need a based person. Right. We need to be anchored to reality like Bitcoin. Anyways, for that, check this out. I'm going to give it. This isn't just soy sauce. Okay. I didn't even know this existed. My, my girlfriend bought this and it's the best fucking tasting soy sauce you've ever had. It's called smoked so so you what is Pro that product of japan it's smoky fucking soy sauce it's delicious very good i recommend it anyways i feel like that would make salmon even better for some Dude, reason it is I, I didn't even know this existed even though salmon already has a smoke i will flavor. never go back to regular soy sauce ever i mean you add know, it to tilapia because tilapia tastes like anything mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and it'll pick up that smoky flavor Okay, yeah. here we go. So, awesome memes. I enjoyed them very much. Um, and for that, I am going to give it this very rare but very cool decal of, and this is, okay, this is the other logo for the other Citadel flag, okay? There's there's the, that's right, there's the Citadel flag that Crypto Cloaks makes, right? Which I have as well. But then there's also the Citadel flag that Bitco makes. Mm -hmm. I cool. love that there's different designs. That's what Bitcoin's yeah. all about, right? But anyways, I have them both, by the way. I also have the other flag. <laughs> anyways, guys, we want to know if you agree with our scores, you disagree. Let us know what you think about Jason down in the comment, 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 down in the comment section, comment, comment, comment. Of course, make sure to subscribe to us on alternative video platforms like Rumble.com and our personal favorite, they don't censor there, Bitcoin TV. Com, and of course, make sure to join our Telegram group so you can link us some dank, dank, dank Bitcoin memes to review so we can review them on the meme review and Phil can pick them and they can be reviewed because of Bitcoin meme review. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the, the Daily News. Brought to you by CryptoCloaks.com. They make the best 3D printed Bitcoin merch like the famous 3D printed Bitcoin art sculpture. <laughs> Opens up, you put your favorite hardware wallet in there and you could also get this in any custom color your heart desires. You want to make that orange, that white? You can make that orange. This just happens to be in El Salvador colors. Anyways, you can take advantage of the link down below for 5% off CryptoCloaks.com. All right, so <laughs> this weekend has been a clusterfuck of, you know, fails. And then and now we have giant leaks. Um, it looks like a bunch of, of exchanges slash Bitcoin service companies. It was a combined attack, right? You had BlockFi that got data leaked. You had... Um, unchained and you had swan right so i want you guys of course you guys have probably heard this if you haven't now you know now i want you guys to pay attention to how they reacted right this is uh this is blockfi's response um you know they say on on, on friday march 18 2022 blockfi learned of a data incident at one of our third-party vendors hubspot which is the same one that swan used a client relationship management platform hubspot has confirmed that an unauthorized third party gained access to certain blockfi client data housed on their platform 
they didn't mention which data. And now mention, look at the second page. Uh, here are some steps to protect your online presence from a third party bad act. That's your job. <laughs> Anyways. You're the third party. <laughs> Practice good password hygiene. Enable 2FA. Turn on allow uh, on allow list for BlockFi. Be extra vigilant. Of... Okay, but hold on a second. None of that would have stopped the leak. None of that, right? Uh, I'm nope, not the only one that feel it. that. I, I'm not the only one that feel that way. This is unacceptable. You need to tell us exactly what was compromised. I'm glad I yanked all my friends last month from BlockFi. Your information was still likely included, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> that, that guy's great. You know, he, I love Bitcoiners, bro. So he's like saying the truth, and then. Now, check out the difference in responses, right? I, I personally, I like Swan, okay? I like Corey. I like what they're doing over there. This is this is Swan's response, right? Now, now look at the difference because it's a very noticeable one. First of all, this was written by Corey himself, which is the CEO of Swan. Then, goes on to say, um, maintaining full transparency and protecting cust uh, customer information is extremely important to us. I didn't say that, BlockFi. Your funds are safe. Your Bitcoin is not at risk. Your financial information is safe. No action is required on your part. Swan systems were not compromised. What type of information was not compromised? What type of information was compromised? So they go on specifically to tell you what is compromised, what wasn't compromised. I'm going to read off this because it's very difficult to compare the two. Now, let me... Holy shit. This just dropped. Okay. New York Dig, which is Bitcoin for institutions was also hacked this just dropped just now during this recording Eesh. they got leaked names email addresses and phone phone numbers that's new york dig for swan specifically what was leaked was names email addresses account type phone numbers and company names for BlockFi, what was leaked was names email addresses and phone numbers now there was another leak that we actually covered when it came out and that was Unchained Capital. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go over it again because we've already covered that. What they leaked was names, email addresses, usernames, whether users have an active or inactive account, and IP addresses. This is a massive combined attack. And what they're doing is really interesting, Phil, because they're not attacking the exchanges directly. They're going through, you know, hey, listen, if these people the deal with custodians, if they deal with email services, maybe they use a third party email company. And that's exactly what they did. Apparently, HubSpot was the one that w did the giant fuck up. Um, but I mean, dude, this is a huge leak. Uh, your name, your email address that was tied to that, uh, dude, like. I. I, don't, I wouldn't go so far as to I, – I don't think physical attacks will happen because from what I, from my understanding, no addresses were leaked. But get ready for some very, very, very conniving phishing attempts with your name, with your email address, you know, the fa exact photocopy to try to get you to part with your Bitcoin so those scammers could take it. This is uh, – you know, and again, it, this highlights the dangers of KYC and AML. This is what happens. It's a honey pot of information. And this is what we keep reiterating. But this is the sad part, Phil. When this happens, no one listens to the damage. It's like when the Equifax hack happened. It was like your social security number, all this catastrophic information that hackers would find out. I think they sent you a free credit report the next year. Ooh. KYC, AML, nothing changes. But the leaks keep on happening. And I think that this discussion is very, very important. Not so much in the United States where security, you know, is somewhat peaceful. But, dude, imagine if you were in, you know, in a, in a more hostile or more dangerous country, dude. And now all of a sudden, bro, people have your name, your email address. Like, bro, you don't think that these hackers are going to go and it's like, oh, I know this influencer. Oh, now mm -hmm. I have. It's like, dude, it, this is unacceptable. I'm very, very glad that Swan and Unchained, both their emails you know, took full responsibility. They said they're going to do better. BlockFi's approach was very different, right? So anyways, just some observations. Phil, what do you think about this? Yeah, so trusted third parties are always a point of failure, okay? They are always a point of failure, and you always have to worry about the information that goes out there. And as a result, all the information that we put out there, we have to be prepared that it you know, it can be compromised. Um, 
I did see, unfortunately, some some pretty bad takes on on Twitter over the weekend about how this, you know, like people were trying to brush this aside, saying, "Oh, well, you know, this isn't, you know, it's not really an issue with with KYC AML." Look, they gathered that data through the know your customer process, through the AML process. So I don't care what nuance, you know what I mean, you want to try to use to convince yourself that that's not what happened. But unfortunately, that's what happened, (laughs) you know? And as a result, like, here we are. And yes, it is, look, if you've never experienced phishing emails, which I think almost everybody has at this point, you know that they can get really good. Yep. And you can definitely find yourself second guessing yourself. Like you're looking at it and I, I've even done it. And I'm like, okay, let me go look at this again. And, and then you end up seeing the nuance, right? The mm-hmm. zero, that's the O or the one instead of the L or whatever yeah. it is. You know, it's, oh my gosh, you know, or just the address is altogether fake, you know? Yep. So just be careful because yes, they are definitely going after your Bitcoin. And I just want to add uh, just to finish up. Okay. There's an older book, a great book, okay, called The Art of Deception. It's the Kevin Mitnick story. And for the people who don't know who Kevin Mitnick is, he is by far one of the best social engineer, quote unquote, hackers I've definitely ever read about. And now, although that book is older, okay, it does explain this vector type of attack, right? Because the thing is, is that, okay, look, the honeypot itself is always going to have a lot of security, but there are many weak points around it and that's what these people do is they try to find the weak points around those secured honey pots and they try to break into them through those weak exterior doors yep. right yep. so and essentially like this is exactly what happened now i'm sure there's better books than that that came out since then but if you want a good baseline i think the art of deception is a is a great place to start and it kind of teaches you a little bit about the uh you know kind of like the the workings of you know, how something like that, you know, comes about. Very interesting. Yeah, dude, yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, get ready. I think you, I think you hit the nail on the head. Get ready for those social engineering types of attacks. Anyways, in other news, check this out. This is how much they hate you. <laughs> really? Like, I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how else to phrase this. Like, connect us with, with the video of what the head of the Department of Energy in the United States had to say. Like, this is the same type of elitism. Like, th- this is, I, I don't know what to say. Like, look at the name of the goddamn title. Inflation stings most if you earn less than 300 k a year. Here's how to deal. Damn. No fucking... I was so close, though. No shit. <laughs> like, no shit. Yeah, I was so close. Like, you know how small that percentage is? Like, it's 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 less than 10%. So it's like, are you, who, are who you are they... saying you don't earn 300 k a year? Who doesn't? <laughs> Come on, who does it? <laughs> like, dude, like everybody like, I know. It's like, dude, this is ridiculous, <laughs> man. This is <laughs> ridiculous, bro. This is oh, insane. Uh, okay, shame on you, Teresa G- Gulu Dici Gucci, whatever. Um, anyways, if your income is more she than earn three hundred k, no. <laughs> if your if your income is more than two hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars a year, the run up in gas prices might be alarming. <laughs> You think? <laughs> like, what are they trying? I don't know how they were trying to phrase this. Are they trying to, like, point to the fact it's like, this shit sucks? Like, no, no, no. It's like, but don't pay. If you make 300K, it doesn't suck for you. The the excuses, and I got this from Kaiser, by the way, and it's a brilliant take. The excuses themselves are suffering from inflation. <laughs> like, they're getting more and more ridiculous <laughs> as they go. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. But it's unlikely to hammer your overall finances. After all, Americans at that level spend no more than 1% of their take-home pay on gas and oil. Thank you for letting us know what those Americans that earn 300 k spend on gas and oil every year. I appreciate it. For those earning much less, like most of us, it's a different story. Those at the medium income with, uh, with income of about 50 k spend more than 3% of it on gas and motor oil. Low-income households making between 7000 and 19000 spend about 9%. But remember, it's okay because you could just get an electric car. The latest inflation numbers show gas prices jumped 6.6% in February from a month earlier, even before President Joe Biden banned U.S. imports on Russian oil. Okay, so... I know what a lot of, a lot of you guys are thinking. What the fuck does this have to do with Bitcoin? It has everything to do with Bitcoin. Because if you earn in dollars and you save in dollars, you are fueling this beast. 
You are fueling political money. So any political goals that that politician in power happens to be in, like Trudeau freezing bank accounts in Canada, like Joe Biden taking all of Afghanistan completely off the banking system, people are literally starving there. Uh, that's political money. If your president happens to be hostile towards gasoline because he has a utopian vision of an all-electric car future, you're going to have to deal with it. How do you not deal with it? You opt the fuck out and you buy yourself some Bitcoin and you start denominating your life in Bitcoin. I promise you, your life will get better. If once you disconnect from the fiat matrix, you're, you will have hope for a better future. You will be optimistic. You will feel better about yourself. You won't have to worry so much about, oh my God, what am I going to do in the future with this? Because instead of your money losing value and money's relative, right? Your money increases in purchasing power over time. It's a totally different dilemma. So what is your option? Political money, right? Which we've seen. We played you the video. We show you. These are the elites. These are your so-called betters. This is what they think of you. It's okay as long as you're in 300K a year. You have that or you have your money that you actually can own, take sole possession, no fear of debasement, no fear of confiscation. You have Bitcoin. Those are your two options. And by the way, option A is going to get a whole lot scarier with central bank digital currencies. Phil, did you go get pizza today? That's bad for your diet. Minus 20 points for you. We're going to subtract $100 from your account. If you think I'm joking, look I at know, Canada. I know you're not. Peaceful protesters. They were in bounce houses. They got their accounts frozen. No court order, nothing. Freeze Nico. that shit. So you're telling me that in 10 years? <laughs> Phil, do you have an electric car? <laughs> not yet. Minus 2,000. <laughs> like, bro. Those like, were evil bounce houses, Nico. <laughs> no one deserves. What my point is, is that no one deserves. No single human being deserves the power to get to decide whether another human being should be able to use money or not. And the sad reality is, is that you're either in the state's money or you're in Bitcoin. You could kind of be hybrid and straddling the two, but I'm telling you, you'll more likely fall into Bitcoin if you start straddling, right? So, dude, I, I don't know how else to see this, Phil. Like, it's just, this is clown world, bro. They're literally telling you, you don't have to care about inflation if you make more than 300k a year. This is fucking ridiculous, bro. Phil? I, yeah, the whole time you were you were going through it and then giving your opinion, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, so did we misunderstand the framing of that article? Like, is it is it trying to make us hate or strongly mm -hmm. despise the people that make more than 300k I see where you're or going. is it trying like like it's like what like to me like that creates this weird division right Cla like why are they telling warfare. us this class information yeah. right yeah. and 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 it's like and i love how they give the statistic right less than or approximately one percent of their net income goes to gas and oil no shit no shit, so little of their income goes to gas and oil. Look at the proportion of their salary, right? And I, I just, it, I find it so, it's so, to that, see, that is toxic. That is divisive, right? Like that article didn't help or inform anyone, okay? So that's why you got to ask yourself, why are they telling me this information? And think about your reaction immediately, right? I think about my reaction immediately. It's like, I'm not upset, right? Like, I'm not upset at the person who earns that much. They did what they had to do to get into that position to earn that much. What I'm upset about is the fact that why isn't the money that we have retaining the value that it should? And why is this going up when it shouldn't? Why did we displace our energy production? Why did we screw ourselves? You know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the anger doesn't go to the place this article wants it to go to if you're actually paying attention to why you're getting poorer. I mean, that's the genius of it, right? It's like, pay, it's the rich people that are causing this, right? Where in fact, it's the government, it's the state, the, pers the people that are supposed to provide you for a better solution. Dude, it, like, it, now that you pointed it out, I can't unsee it because you can't come to another logical conclusion. 
what the f was the point of that article other to create class conflict it yeah i don't get it why why I, tell us this like no shit no shit it costs less for a rich person oh my gosh no way the rich person doesn't struggle as hard we are shocked and you surprised could, you could bury the lead you could bury the lead and like name it have it you know different title e saying hey poor people are getting hurt most by inflation no it doesn't say that it says if you make 300 thousand here you're okay like no man it, it, i totally agree i think this is total you know this is a bait and switch i, I felt I, I fell for it you know i was like this is this makes me upset oh, I, I did too initially but it was so, you reflecting on it that got me i'm like all right why are they telling us this like what it, like i'm just pissed now you yeah, know yeah and <laughs> I, I think you made one excellent point and i'll kind of end it with this phil is look you made an excellent point which is why are people affecting or you know specifically people in government affecting the price of power and gas and whatever that's a really good point but here's the thing whether you whether you put what are your political beliefs support that or not the sad reality is that you are making other people poor with your political beliefs i fundamentally believe that money and politics should be completely separate you shouldn't have to shoulder the burden for what some bureaucrat politician central planner has to do like what they want to do they shouldn't ha have the ability or the power to affect your life I, I think that's corrupted every facet of society i think we're reaching the pinnacle of that right we're reaching peak centralization bro where literally phil like you have politicians they don't even care anymore this was unthinkable 20 years ago if you have the wrong this is happening in the west if you have wrong political beliefs they other you they freeze you they start in with deplatforming and everyone was up in arms it's like dude mm -hmm. this isn't gonna end and now it's reached money finance half of every transaction that's ever happened in the world now that's affecting it now you have a better option which is a political money money can't be sent doesn't matter who you who's using bitcoin you can't stop them from using bitcoin and that's the point it works similar to freedom of speech right where you have the first amendment in the u.s founding fathers came to the conclusion whoever gets to decide what speech is not okay and okay is going to be the tyrant right so bitcoin kind of has similar principles perhaps you disagree i don't know but anyways phil there was an open source software release today why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases brought to you by CypherSafe. You need to store your seed. I need to store my seed. Let's face it. We have to store our seeds. Store it in the, okay. Store it in the Cypher wheel or the all new Cypher grid. They both come with tamper resistant wire, but the Cypher grid comes with a punch tool. All right, we've got Sparrow Wallet version 1.6.2 that was released. It's down below in the show notes. Guys, don't forget to check us out on our audio only podcast uh, on our our on our audio only platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and if you want to stream us sats Fountain.fm. I was almost going to say Anchor again. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was the show. Before we go, I want to give a very special shout out to our awesome hoodie sponsor, clothing sponsor. I'm not going to just screen share between me and Phil because Phil and I are wearing the exact same one. This is the Decentralized Corp. We don't plan this. Uh, and you can take advantage of the link down below for 10% off anything off the RepHard.com store. Check it out today. But anyways, guys, that was the show. If you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button, smash it. And of course, if you want to continue hearing the Bitcoin news from the plea plaid perspective and the catastrophic fails from the central planners, definitely consider subscribing to Simply Bitcoin. And we will see you tomorrow, guys, for a brand new episode. There are no trusted third parties. It's time to separate money from state.